contend for first place, but uh, it's between second and third. So I suspect it'll be a, quite an open match. Mark Williams started the day with a 3-0 win over Aaron Hill, but it was that 3-0 defeat to Lu Ning. Again, very similar to the other group. that just changed everything. And then he was hoping that Hill would beat Lu Ning. That didn't happen, so that's why they're playing for second or third. Williams has got a 100% record to protect here. He's played Maguire four times previously in the Championship League and won all four. Helped by three centuries, including a 137. Let's judge that though, trying to go into the bunch. You were right, Dave. Oh, <laughs> Red's gone in. I'll tell you what, Stephen Maguire today, over the piece, has not had the best of fortune. And that's putting it mildly. He'll well, be quietly simmering. Well, just watch this last kiss here. Nothing in at this point, and then there's just a little kiss on that red, knocked it into the pocket. No. So. The thing is, these are big time players, aren't they? And Obviously, all right, a grand's a grand, yes, but it would be different, I think, this match if they were competing to get back into the event on Friday in stage three. So expect it to be, we've already seen, expect it to be an open match and it's going to be about just who gets them. Williams was a little fortunate. 60. That red went in. Stage is set for a big break here. Had that 1-3-3 three, three in his first match. He played so well in that match this morning against Aaron 17. Hill. 17. But Lu Ning was uh, very stubborn in the match they played here this evening. I think, though, Phil, the highlight of the day must be the, the birthday cake that uh, was, was bought for you, a, a, a lovely sponge. Wasn't it just... Wasn't allowed to have the, the 60 candles. I think it was health and safety stepped in. But, yeah, Phoebe Millen from Matchroom, she looks after us so, so well. And she came up with the goods. As a keen golfer, David, it's the only time I like a slice out of a birthday cake. 30. A nice joke there. 31. Well, Mark Williams, uh, I'm sure would like to produce a strong performance here, but the disappointment is obvious that it's not a match that will decide who wins the group. But he started the season well. Of course, he won, obviously, in the first stage. He's qualified for 36. the European Masters. Of course, last season, he won the British Open very early on in the campaign. 37. Yes, the way he qualified for the European Masters, not... The weekend gone, the weekend before that was, I think, very illuminating. He was 4-2 down to Liam Highfield, pulled it back to 4-4, four, four, went 61-0 down in the decider and produced a 62 clearance. It was vintage stuff, but the pink wasn't well, vintage. Was I was saying that Williams had won all of their meetings in the Championship League. Head to head wise in other tournaments, though. Maguire has had the better record. Seven. He leads Williams 6 3. Eight. Their first meeting was 17 years ago, last 16 of the Northern Ireland Trophy in 2005. Maguire won 4-3 from 3-1 down. 
Yeah, I think in any tournament, Williams v Maguire, it feels like a sort of even match, doesn't it? You wouldn't really, I don't think, uh, invest too much on either of them because either can beat the other on any given day. Obviously, Williams has had the better career, but Steve Maguire doesn't fear it's anybody. That's one of his great strengths. Twenty-four. He's beaten Williams three times at the UK Championship 2007 quarter-final, 9-5, clinched with a break of 130. 31. 2014 UK Championship won 6-2 in the last 32. 32. And then 6-5 in the last 16 in 2018 from 4-2 down. That day he made three centuries and a 97. The biggest occasion 35. victory for Williams over Maguire. 6 4 in the last 16 of the Masters a decade ago. 36, cheers. 36. So we come down to the, the crux of the frame now, these last two reds on cushions. Forty-three. Forty-four. That wasn't clean, and this will need 51. to be very precise. Steve Maguire, 51. 51 to lead by 14 on the last red. 1. Super pot from Williams. Pressure's off to a degree, though, it's got to be said in this match, because it's not going to decide... Uh, Mark Williams won. Group winner, and maybe the fact that pressure's off didn't help there, actually. So, Maguire, favourite now on the yellow to win this frame. Two. Five. Brown is frame ball. Nine. Steve Maguire, nine, and the first frame. This group has been won already by Lu Ning. This is about... He was like Usain Bolt there on the starting blocks. Couldn't wait to hit the white. Oh, this is nice. This is very nice. Eight. Nine. Referee Rob Spencer had a, a couple of long matches last week and then stayed on for the European Masters. I don't think this will be one that will delay him too long. Maguire goes into them. Yeah, by the end of this week, there's Rob, by the end of this week, with the 14. qualifying as well, he would have refereed 20 days in a row without a break. What a trooper. <laughs> and that's why, as I mentioned in the previous match, he's allowed the odd verbal faux pas, i.e. Jensen Button. 50. Good of you to mention it again, Phil, after, after he berated you for mentioning it in the first place. Oh, yeah, he blamed us, of course. In fact, he said it and we just reported. 
20. Cracking pot that. I know he surprisingly lost to Oliver Brown in the European Masters. I know he's not going to win this group. But I've seen enough from Maguire in this tournament to suggest he's got a couple of 29. deep runs in tournaments in him this season. Well, if you look at his career, he's come good every good. so often, hasn't he? You can never quite predict when it'll be. But, yeah, you absolutely can turn it on for a week. Not at the European Masters. He didn't qualify for that. It was a really strange match against Oliver Brown because, obviously, he's a big favourite to win. And he made back-to-back -back centuries to go all three up but didn't get the job done. And he's it's not got the job done 55. there. No, it's a little bit loose, but as I say, that's kind of reflective of the situation they find themselves in. I think, listen, they both want to win, yes, but equally I think they just want to get the, the match out of the way now because they didn't get what they came here for today, which was a place in the third phase on Friday. Exactly the same applies to Hossein Vafai and Jimmy Robertson on table two. Where I can Six. tell you, Robertson has just equalised. It's 1-1. One, one. Seven. Thirty. Twenty. Twenty. Twenty six. Yeah, another slightly loose Matt one. Williams, 26. Just sort of petering out now, isn't it? It's kind of the headline act has, has left the building, Lu Ning. He'll be coming back Friday. <laughs> mm. I'm afraid it's one of the hazards of this format. It's surprising, oh. actually, just how many groups do go down to the final match. Far more than you might imagine. But Five. sometimes you can get a situation like this where it is, to a degree, anti-climax. But, of course, on Friday, when the trophy is lifted, it will not be. As Dave has mentioned, it is two four-player groups. 11 on both tables, well. and then the two winners of those groups go head-to-head -head over the best of five frames. 
all the silverware. Eighty. Yeah, to win the Championship League, you'll have to have played ten matches and won almost all of them. Dave Gilbert lost one last year. Matt Williams, 18. Along the way. Tomorrow we've got uh, two very interesting groups, Stuart Bingham, Ben Wollaston, Jordan Brown and Jamie Jones. That'll be on this table. And table two, Dave Gilbert, the reigning champion, Robert Milkins, Michael White and Jiao Gudong. So, get the feeling those might well come down to the last set of matches because they seem paid for anyway to be close groups. Wollaston, of course, beat Mark Selby to win their group. He's a master of sarcasm, isn't he? Mark Williams tapping the table there. Get hold of that cue ball at all. Well, you touched on this, Dave. These guys throughout their careers play on adrenaline. When there isn't any there, it's tough to, to get going. Stephen Maguire won. Well, just a bit of focus needed here because this is a golden chance for 2-0. And then the long drive <laughs> up north for Maguire. I'm sure he'd be delighted, though, that the Scottish Fine. Open this season is actually in Scotland. It's been Edinburgh. After COVID forced it to be firstly in Milton Keynes and then Eight. contractual issue meant last year ended up in Clandidno in North Wales. And although I can't well, say this from first-hand knowledge, all of the reports suggest that the new venue, the Meadowbank Sports Centre in Edinburgh, 17. is terrific. The main thing is it's in Scotland for Maguire. He's won that frame. It was again... One where there were lots of chances either way, but Maguire's won it. He leads 2-0. It's 2-0 to Steve Maguire against Mark Williams, but neither can win the group. Lu Ning has already won it. That's why he's been very open as the clock the third ticks frame. down and frame three gets underway. If he wins it, he will at least end the day in second place. Well, oh, well, one's gone in. He's had a bit of luck at last. One definitely went in one. there. I say a bit of luck, I suppose... <laughs> Could have finished a little better for a colour, but you can't really complain if you just smashed into them. It's a bit hampered on the blue, but you'll be taking it on. Ah, nicely done. Here we go again. Could be like a frame of nine ball, this. Six. The wing ball, as they call it, going in. He could run Seven. out. A break and run.
12. Yes, of course, uh, the European Open fell very shortly in, uh, in Berlin, and actually uh, your birthday tributes continue to pour in because Marcel Eckhart from Berlin sent a message earlier to wish you well. Thanks, uh, Marcel. Yeah, it's in a place called 20. Fulda, actually, near, near Frankfurt. The Hotel Esperanto. Sounds great. 21. Now, Williams encouraging Maguire here to do well. Maguire said, I don't think I've ever won a frame directly off the break. And Williams saying, I don't think I've ever lost one. 26. A prime occasion to lose a frame off the break would have been, well, a number of years ago now when Europe against the Australian Quinton Han, who went through a phase of breaking off, like Maguire did there, in big tournaments, 30. in knockout situations. Well, I remember one year he played Williams at the Cruise Blue and 35. Mark beat him 13-2. He won the last 13 frames, so the strategy that year didn't exactly work for Quinton. Forty-two. Forty-three. We saw this in Mark Allen, though, didn't we, last Thursday, you know, when the pressure's off. These guys are just really, really good. Fifty. Fifty-one. Yes, Allen was amazing, wasn't he? Just running around the table, winning frames in six... Seven, five minutes even. And then in the European Masters qualifiers, he was 3 1 up to Farah Kajave, lost 5 3. That was a, a real shock to everyone. Yes, and he put a sort of rather cryptic tweet out afterwards. Sometimes you just have to laugh, so that could mean anything, couldn't it? Anyway. It's Lu Ning who's had the last laugh in this group, but Stephen Maguire 66. has ended on a high crashed into the reds off the break off not one in 67 and he's won the frame off it so he's going to finish second mark williams third aaron hill of course fourth in this group but lu ning crucially coming back on friday 72 73 average shot time for Maguire in this match 13 seconds and he's had enough because he's Steven not gone for a pot and Mark's going to carry on. <laughs> that's classic Williams. Maguire was going around to shake hands, and that's the only reason Mark Williams has carried on, to annoy him. <laughs> and there is the handshake. So Pretty it is Steve Maguire well. who finishes second. Steve I think a lot of us thought this could be the group decider, but Lu Ning, of course, had already...